On the 24th of September, one of the most trusted financial analysts wrote an article for The Motley Fool called My Top Auto Stock to Buy and Hold Forever is Ford Motors. He claims that an evolving industry puts this automaker at the top of its game. And fortunately for many of you, this guy didn't encourage you to buy Ford stock back in 2000, the year 2000, the turn of the century. Back then, Ford stock was worth around 25 US dollars. Today, it's worth less than 12. Seven days ago on the 19th of September, Ford reassured its investors that everything will be okay, that they shouldn't worry. Well, investors are worried. Ford's stock price has tanked, and it could be because Ford doesn't have any more badges to put on its cars. No, I'm joking here. But in all seriousness, this manufacturing issue for Ford, who are meant to be this massive dominant manufacturer with more than 100 years of manufacturing experience, who are going to put Tesla to shame with their manufacturing expertise, that's what was meant to happen. But it's not playing out that way at all. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome to everyone else. And thank you for tuning in. My name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. On the 16th of September, Ford announced they wanted to be more like Tesla and plan to overhaul their manufacturing process. They say that they have too many staff on the production line. Tesla has about half the number of staff because they use more robotics. And Jim Farley has praised Tesla's electric vehicle manufacturing. Interesting. A few days later, on the 20th of September, 2022, Ford announced it continued to battle part shortages that have plagued the global automotive industry for two and a half years. Shares of the automaker were down 11% that day after it announced it had an unexpected one billion US dollar parts bill due to the costs of inflation to the company. Apparently, Ford say all parts for their vehicles cost between 7 and 20% more than they had expected, and that was forecast for this year. Ford at the time published a press release stating that the company was continuing to battle the ongoing part shortage and rising parts cost due to inflation. The company now estimates that up to 45,000 vehicles are forced to wait until Q4, the fourth quarter of this year, for parts to be installed in them. Now, I just published an article saying that Ford has the worst, the worst cost rate for warranties of any car company in the United States. In fact, its costs on warranty are approximately twice as much as General Motors. Jim Farley has hired a new team to try and address this. He says it's Ford's biggest problem, warranty and quality control. So, Ford's manufacturing prowess doesn't look so prowess-like right now. The thing is, right, all of this has kind of gotten a bit comical with the most recent news that came out yesterday. But before I get there, the chief financial officer of US car giant Ford conceded the auto industry pushed semiconductor suppliers too far when negotiating on price, a move which led to chronic shortages of the high-tech parts and crippled vehicle production around the world. Ford said, one thing we're learning about the whole semiconductor crisis that's happening globally is that the traditional low profit margin auto industry took just in time manufacturing and the lowest cost as the number one priority. Now, the thing is, Ford said their current crisis is mainly an issue of a semiconductor problem that's affected everyone. They even said the semiconductor shortage didn't discriminate. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? Why is it that over this period of time, Tesla was able to increase its sales by 100% and BYD by 170%? Well, Ford sales, well, production constrained, production constrained, production constrained, excuses, excuses, excuses. Now, the comical part about all of this is the fact that Ford just revealed one of the key reasons its vehicles are not being delivered to customers. One of them, maybe not the only reason, but it's a very important one. Now, Ford has got all these excuses for semiconductor shortages and all these other reasons that it's been out of their control. And it sounds a lot like what they've done in China. Sales of the Mustang Mach-E in China have been absolutely abysmal. They've been minuscule and well below what Ford had predicted. What did Ford do? They blamed BYD. Literally, I'm telling you the truth here. 
Ford said it was BYD's fault because of some sort of battery shortage. And the reality is, is that taking responsibility for your own decision to have one battery supplier and to rely only on them? Whose responsibility is that really? Now, if it really was a battery supply crunch, how have BYD been able to ramp up their actual battery sales and vehicle sales at such an insane rate over the past 12 months? I'm not sure that Ford is telling the truth. The thing is, right, Ford has more excuses yet again. And now they can't make enough badges for their cars, which I can't understand. It's not like they're producing massive amounts of cars right now. It's not like their cars are flying out the doors and you know, their production is increasing at a rapid rate like BYD. I mean, if BYD said we can't produce enough badges, you'd think, well, okay, you know, your sales this year are 170% higher than last year. So fair enough. But when Ford says it, you think, well, you haven't really ramped up at all. So what's the issue? The reality is Ford simply can't make enough of these little badges. I don't understand how that is even possible. Now, apparently right now, there's 45,000 F-150 pickups sitting in a parking lot in the US because none of them have badges to go on them. The thing is, these are not the only ones. Apparently, these are just a fraction of the total number of Ford vehicles that are sitting in the US basically getting dirty. So they'll have to be washed before they go out to customers again because... Ford hasn't made enough badges. I mean, how is this possible? Apparently, Jim Farley is doing all the research and he's doing all the homework and he's got an expert team behind him. But this team doesn't even know how to make enough badges for its cars. Now, in a story reported by the Wall Street Journal, Ford admitted it doesn't have enough badges to complete a recent batch of vehicles and it had to delay their delivery. The shortage of badges is believed to be linked, at least in part, to a production slowdown at a Michigan component supply company called Tribar. This is crazy. I mean, Ford were one of the companies who said Tesla was wrong about vertical integration. They actually did say that. The thing is, Ford doesn't even make its own badges. It's relying on Tribar to make Ford badges for itself. You can't make this stuff up. And frankly, it's shocking. The thing is, it doesn't just cover the blue badge. It covers the actual model badge as well. This shortage covers the historic Ford badge, and the model and grade badges for individual vehicles. So three different types among many different variants. Ford reportedly considered 3D printing the badges as a stopgap solution to the shortage, but it rejected the idea because it was concerned about the potential quality. Now, fortunately, this issue isn't expecting Australian, isn't affecting Australian Fords because Ford badges for Australian vehicles are manufactured in Thailand. I personally hope Ford emerges out of this situation unscathed, but I do feel a little bit, a little bit sad for people who have invested in Ford. A lot of people have invested their life savings, or at least a part of them, into this car company. And right now, it has the lowest price to earnings multiple of any automaker in the world. The lowest price to earnings of Ford right now are at four. That is historically low. The average, right? The average for the US stock exchange is around 15 over the past 100 years. But over the past 20 years, it's been closer to 20. Why is it that investors have lost so much faith in Ford? Well, maybe this is one of the reasons. Maybe Ford's manufacturing prowess was never actually that impressive at all. And maybe they relied on so many different parts and components companies in order to make their cars. And that's one of the key reasons why their warranties are costing them so much money and why their vehicles are being delayed and not getting to customers. Now, maybe I'm wrong on this. I could be. But I've done a fair bit of research on it. It does look like this is all a bit of a shambles right now. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.